Hello everybody, I'm Kayla Malone and I'm here with Dr. Mark Lamont Hill. Um, let's just get straight to it, you've had a long day. So my question is, do you think our generation thinks that Donald Trump is the worst president because we've only had Obama, or is he just really that horrible of a president? Well, I think history will be the best indicator of whether he's a great president or a good president. I think it's very difficult in the moment to assess. I think the contrast between Barack Obama and Donald Trump is so stark. Um, their presentation, uh, what we traditionally understand as what it means to be presidential or statesmanly, uh, these are very different. Um, discipline, you know, Donald Trump tweets, um, his uh, background, uh, all these things are very different. And so I think it's very easy to read Donald Trump one way and Barack Obama another way. You know, 13 days into a presidency, I think it's too early to say whether Donald Trump will be a good or a bad president. Mm -hmm. I see no evidence that he will be a good president. I am not encouraged by his particular agenda, his particular policies. Um, but there's also a distinction between a president with whom I have an ideological difference and a president who actually is ineffective at the job. So I, Ronald Reagan was very successful at making the world what he wanted it to be. I just disagreed with what Ronald Reagan believed in. So I wouldn't call Ronald Reagan a bad president. I would call Ronald Reagan an incredibly effective, one of the great American presidents who managed the American empire in ways that I found deeply disturbing and dangerous. Um, Donald Trump could be that, or he could be somebody who bumbles and fumbles and alienates and silences and, and you know, maybe even breaks laws. I mean, we don't know yet. So I think it's too early to say, but I do think the contrast in style and approach between Barack Obama and Donald Trump makes it tough for a generation that's only really remembering two presidents to feel like they may have, you know, pulled, you know, struck a bad chord or, or went in the wrong direction. Okay. And my final question is, how do we, like, when we're getting out our message, one thing I found is that there's a lot of people who don't want to listen to me, or like, like Trump supporters, you know, it's really hard getting my message out there because people don't want to hear. So how do you deal with those people? Like, not just critics, but people who just refuse to listen. Some people need to learn to listen. Other folk, you have to recognize, you may, maybe they don't need to, right? Like there are people, you know, when you organize for resistance, when you organize a movement, you never have consensus, you never have a majority. Only 12 and a half to 13% of black folk march for civil rights. That means 87 and a half didn't go to one march, participate in one action, hold one sign, sing one song, do one sit-in. So if you know that most people aren't going to be engaged in the work in that way, then you're not as obsessed with trying to convert everybody who doesn't listen to you. I think we should hear people's stories, we should listen to people's pain, we should argue on people's terms, you know, if they're fundamentalist Christians, we should explain to them how not accepting refugees is unchristian-like. You know, if someone is a strict constitutionalist, we can explain how, you know, solitary confinement is cruel and unusual punishment, and doesn't honor the spirit of the Constitution. We can argue in their terms, but if ultimately they find it unpersuasive, we have to keep organizing anyway. Your success as a resistance movement can't hinge on um, whether or not you get the majority to believe in you, because then the majority never will. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you.